some of us and many of us as Christians struggle when we, we become Christians because there's a way we used to think in the world. Or even some of us have been Christians for the longest time, but we were introduced to religion. There's a way religion is which is separate from the word of God. We do not follow religion, we follow the word of God. There are many things that are believed, some picked up from the world, that are totally different from how the kingdom of God should operate. And God is helping us. As we learn, the spirit of God is able to help us. I repeat, and I like to repeat this, I'm not telling you things to create another law a burden, all these things we need to do. No, it is the spirit of God as we, he works with the word and we're going to learn that by the way in uh, Captured in Glory, how the Holy Spirit and the word work together. Why we keep laying hands on you and releasing fire on you even as we teach you the word is because they work together. The Holy Spirit and the word work together. Yes, so the Holy Spirit is helping us as we receive the word. Out of knowledge, we come to understand and we, we are able to live out what we know. Imagine if the Holy Spirit is working on nothing because we do not know how the kingdom works. Then we cannot be the way the kingdom is supposed to be. But as we learn, then the Holy Spirit has something to work with. I'll give you a funny example. Our daughter is still, okay, she's, she talks better than many kids of her age, but she still has like us like um, funny sounding, she, she makes funny sounds, like she won't pronounce all the things normally the way they're supposed to be pronounced. So there's one day she was telling me about a, a baby in this church. I've even forgotten his name, Joram, something like that. Duran, Duran. So every time she would tell me about him, I didn't even know she was talking about him, but she, she wanted to tell me something about him. So she would say something that sounded like Joan. So I'm just like, Joanne, she's like, no. Then, okay, tell me again, she says, Joanne. So you see, <laughs> it took me a very long, like a week, now later, because she remembers and she, she, now I understood, she was saying, Duran, but she's pronouncing it as Joanne. There is no way I would have understood. I think someone, my husband is the one who figured it out and told me that she's talking about Duran. So you see, if I, because I didn't know even that baby is called Duran, I cannot understand what my baby is trying to say because there's nothing to work with. I am totally empty, so I cannot understand. I just know Joanne. You see, even my interpretation is the closest to what I know. Do you understand? Maybe someone who does not even know the name Joanne now would not even figure out that one. Now that one I'm figuring it out from my knowledge, where my knowledge is reaching. So you see the importance of the word? The word gives you you have an understanding. So the Holy Spirit can, you can understand some things on a higher level. Pastor has even told this, us this before. If you're called to the prophetic or if you're prophetic, read the word. We hear by, hearing comes by the word of God. Part of it means that, that there are things you cannot work in the prophetic. You cannot hear some things because you don't have that understanding because you lack the word. So there are things the Holy Spirit can't tell you or even he tells you but you don't understand. You are out of the radar. Like me with Duran and Joanne. Are we together? Yes. So the word and the Holy Spirit work together. So these shocking lessons, Jesus culture that we learned on Thursday, are, maybe I can give you a, a quick explanation of what we are, we are doing. It was like what the word says versus what the world says. Like what we are used to, what is normal, what is accepted, what is celebrated in the world or in religion versus what the word says and what is celebrated in heaven. Because we realize that they are actually rewards, like God is happy when we are starting to think like him, live like him, talk like him. Amen? So number one was that greatness in the kingdom comes from service. And Jesus makes the explanation and the, like the scriptures explain it so well. He talks about, I didn't even write down the scriptures because I don't want you guys to, to derail me to that. But he said that in the world, uh, leaders lead by, they are forceful, they are tyrants. I remember that word in one of the translations that you, you in the world, being a good leader, you're a tyrant. You force people to do things. You sit down, cross your legs and do nothing and just order people around. But in the kingdom, and he says that, that it is not going to be so with you. It should not be so with you. Who is you? You, a child of God. You who is born again. You who is, who is of his lineage, the lineage of God. For you, leadership is being a servant. And he continues to say that even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. Yes, so if you're a leader, and most of you are, if not all of you, we keep telling you that 
you need to learn the kingdom way of leadership. The kingdom way of being great is being a servant. Yeah, forget about, I, I love um, listening to many men of God, um, and one of them uh, is Apostle Selman, and he says that every time, because he's growing, people are knowing him all over the world, he's seeing miracle signs and wonders everywhere, the world is talking about him. He says, Father, don't allow me to ever forget that to you I'm just that small boy. Let me never forget that to you I'm that small boy. And I, I have started to, to tell myself that also. I got a, I, I get several words and I, you were here when uh, Pastor Ben Isaac was prophesying to me. And he said millions will know me. I'm telling you that is scary. You tell God and you all should be telling God as I grow great. Because you know we tell you it's too late now. As long as you've joined this church we believe in greatness. We believe that you're going to be everything God said. You're going to be rich. Filthy, because we need that money for whatever God has called us to do. So you need to start praying that prayer also in your own terms. God help me to remember. Remember who I am to you. I'm just your child. Yes, I need you like everyone else in the world. I need you. Yes. So, greatness to God is being a servant. Let there be nothing that you can't do for God. That needs to be done. And I tell people that. There is nothing in this church. I was even thinking the other day, I, I think I've done everything. I've led worship, I've led prayers. I told you I've washed the toilets, I've cleaned the church, I have done posters, I used to be the media team. Yes, I did very many. If you see those ugly posters we used to, don't complain. Those were the level that we were at that time. That's what I could do. And I was available. That's funny. I was, I was available and God accepted my sacrifice. Yeah, don't sit and wait for the pulpit. This pulpit pastor tells you he loves to preach. He will preach every Sunday. <laughs> so if that, you will leave the churches, that's what you think greatness is or that's what serving God is. Serve God in any way that is available. Yes, pastor keeps telling us that. that don't, don't wait. What is purpose? Purpose is being available. Wherever you are right now, be available. Do your best. Honorable in Mianza Kupricia Thursday, my God. Ah, yeah. Number two, but go watch the sermon. Number two was repaying evil with good. That scripture, we read it again. We've had it over and over again. If someone, or maybe you've not had it because people avoid it because they can't understand it or it's not acceptable to the world. But if someone takes your coat, you give them your shirt. If they slap you on this side, you give them the other side. You pray for your enemies. You love them. Kingdom culture. Jesus culture. And I explained to you his point was that because at the end of that scripture he says then you will be like your father in heaven who gives sunshine to everyone to the evil and to the good he gives rain it does not just rain in our place in Siokimau because we are called of God it rains on everyone even the person who they even rained on if they were left on the ditch last night they were drinking or they are in whatever they raped someone still rains in their farm in their farm business that's our Father in heaven. You see that feeling you have in your mind? That is the renewal of the mind that we need. All of us. So that we start seeing that as acceptable, as good, because that's what God is and that's what he wants of us. That we love our enemies. I wanted to, I, I went home thinking, I'm, I'm a thinker, so I went home thinking. I'm not saying that we allow like unhealthy relationships and healthy you understand like you can keep your distance but you love them it's a it's a state of the heart that you love them that you don't have anything against them that you don't pray evil for them that if they needed help you would help if they if they what what did i want to say it's it's lost but like you you are like god yeah that you don't pray anything negative for them. you're not happy when something bad happens to them check your heart if that's you're very far from the heart of god do you understand yeah, so you don't have to be best friends with someone who's always stealing your money. Uh, that's not what we are saying. I hope that's not what you got. You get, but your heart, the state of your heart, the posture of your heart is love and praying that they will get better, that they will do better, that their businesses are prospering, that their children are healthy, that they are not sick and spending their money in hospital. That is the state of the heart of a child of God. Amen. Number three, self-reliance is frowned upon. We talked about this, that in the kingdom of God we rely on God, first of all, we've preached about that many times, our salvation is through the cross fully. Your works are useless. Your righteousness is filthy rags. We fully rely on God, that's number one. Number two, we fully rely on each other. And I read second, first, first Corinthians chapter 12. That's where um, 
Paul talked about the body and parts of the body and how there was a scripture that asks, imagine if the whole body is a nose. Now you, the person here, maybe you think you are enough. You don't need people. You just come to church, listen and run home. You don't need, you are a nose. How are you going to walk? How are you going to hear? How are you going to, you understand? Yeah, hold things, a cup. You need hands. You need every part of the body. So that is an emphasis in the kingdom that there is no self-reliance. We are codependent. We work together. And God wants it like that. He created it to work like that. Number three, we saw that um, we depend on Holy Spirit. Remind me. Yes, we need spiritual leadership. And I read my favorite verse these days because even me, it applies to me. I have spiritual leadership. Romans, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 14, verse 17 or 17, verse 14. 13 verse 17, my people are ahead. Thank you. Uh, we need spiritual leadership and that's another, we rely on spiritual leadership and that's how God created it to be. Yes, we need covering. What do the spiritual leaders do for us? They watch over our souls. They account for your soul and mine is accounted for. Okay? Yes, so we rely, we rely on God fully in this kingdom. We rely on each other and we rely on spiritual leadership. There is no being alone. And that is comparison with the world. The world tells you to be alone. You can't trust anyone. You are your own best friend. Lies. Okay? Yeah, the devil just wants you to stay alone. Don't be accountable to anyone so that he can kill you, finish you off. And I gave you a story of what happens, has happened severally in our church where someone was very committed. We know them. We know what's happening with them. And then they, they leave for, sometimes it's even a good reason for work or something. And they, they do not connect in another, another church there. And also, I've now thought about it, they also don't keep connected here. So pastor does not know what's happening. The house leader does not know what's happening. In a year or so, things went wrong. They fell into sin. They are no longer in fellowship. And sometimes they never even come back. It's like, and I, by saying come back, I know they don't have to come back to our church, but they are, quote unquote, we don't lose salvation, but I want you to understand the context, that they are not in fellowship with God, which is very sad. Why did it happen? Because they lost, they were self-reliant in a way. Okay, so let us not be. Um, pray, easy pray for the devil by being alone. Number four, walking in God's glory. This one was one of my favorites. Walking in God's glory brings God glory. We, we contrasted the world and the religion mostly and what the word says. So religion tells you that humility is shrinking. Humility is when someone tells you not, not accepting that you've done anything good. That's what humility is in religion. I gave you an example. I, I preach well. Let's say today I preach very well, which I'm doing. And then when you call me or text me, or even some of you, Yanni, you guys are just amazing. Come and give me money. Today someone paid for my Uber to and fro. God bless you. I want to look at you. Maybe you didn't want to be seen. Oh, we talked about that. That when you, <laughs> when, you, when you do something good and then you do it for people to see, then that is your reward. That's what the word says. Hey, you hide. Don't show people what you are doing so that God's reward is much better. Wow. Just hand claps and people smiling and saying, oh, Danu is good. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want that reward. Me, I want God's reward. Anyway, back to the story. So you, you tell me I, I preached well, then I tell you it, it is Jesus. You know, don't, no, don't. You, you, if you've been in a religious church, they even want to like go down. Like, don't, don't, don't tell me it's Jesus. Okay, I understand, but that's not humility. Let me uh, explain in very few words what we, we talked about with a lot of scripture. But I'm not saying scripture not because I don't know or there was no scripture. It's because we are trying to get to the ones for today. And it is because this is the same topic we are doing today. That's why I am doing this. The last two. Yeah, so uh, we saw that Jesus, when he was praying for the disciples and for us. Because, you know, did you ever see in um, John, is it chapter 16? He prays for us also. Like those who will come after the disciples. So in case you are that any uh, of the word, you're like, he was praying for the disciples, he was also, also praying for us. That he gave us the glory that the Father gave to him. Hey! That he gave you to walk in glory. The same, in fact, that's the word he says. The same glory you gave to me, I gave to them. So that they may be one. I told you guys I don't want to go into that. But we are going to learn that one day. That as the, the, the church, as we understand this glory, as we start to walk in the levels that God has set for us, then there will be a lot of unity. 
because we will have all those other things, competition, yeah, all these other things that happen with churches, comparison and all that stuff, will have fallen off. And then we'll be walking in a higher level and there will be a lot of unity. That's the church that Christ is coming for. Hey, yeah, so the more you walk in glory, the faster you, you make Jesus, you need the time faster for him to come back. Yes, yeah, so um, he wants us to walk in that glory. He even says that as we behold, as in a mirror, who God is and we become more like him, we become more like him gl from glory to glory, that he wants even that glory to increase, like the glory you're walking in now. Maybe you've heard that word glory like me. Like it has taken time for God to teach me what glory means. You know, growing up in church does not mean that you understand these things. In fact, sometimes it's harder. So glory means like that level of God, like God-like life. Where, and examples, we talk about them a lot here, is walking in divine health, releasing that health, walking in peace when there's a storm. Like Jesus was a perfect example of God. And that's the way he lived his life, that was glorious. That was glory. And that's how he wants us to live. Where you carry peace wherever you go, you carry joy wherever you go. There's no impossibility in your life because you move mountains through faith and all these things that I'm talking about. So that's the glory. That glory brings God glory. And I gave you an example, I think Matthew chapter 5, where he talks about that you should um, shine your light. Let your light so shine that, um, my, yes, that, they, that they will see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. I gave you that one. Then there was another one, the one that Pastor Ben Isaac shared with us, where Jesus was able to forgive someone of their sin and heal them and the people were in awe at the end of that because God like they gave glory to God because he would give such power to a man yes so contrary to what we have been taught that shrinking and being small and being in the background and not showing anything good that you are doing that does not bring glory contrary to that what the word says is that walking in this glory fully moving mountains wherever you go, being a light, so shine. You know, there's an extreme, and that's what we are trying to communicate. There's an extreme to this. Like it doesn't say just shine your light. It says let your light so shine. I tried to explain that. That this, like God wants you to walk in this glory so much that people know that it was definitely not you. And that brings him glory. So all these other things, you, you believe God for healing from a headache, and that you're comfortable with that, may don't have headaches. He wants you to heal cancer, so that we are not burying anyone. And then glory is given to him. I gave this funny story that I'll, re I'll repeat <laughs> about the donkey. So there's a, a preacher who went to a certain country and really showed the power of God, miracles, signs, wonders, the power, glory walked in the glory of God. And then people the next day wanted to touch him, like he couldn't walk peacefully on the street. People want to touch him, people want to take his things to go and put on their sick people. People are nearly, it looks like they're nearly worshiping him. And then he, he, God spoke to him. God told him, oh, like he, he was stopping them. He's like, no, it is God, just the religious, we've talked about this one. Yeah, like just, no, it's not me, it's God, don't do that, don't touch me. You go and touch God, go and look for God, things like that. <laughs> so uh, God told him, you're like the donkey. You know, no, imagine if the donkey was like that. So he's like, which donkey? So he, God shows him like the donkey that carried Jesus. And I told you it's this season of Lent and um, Easter. You remember that donkey that was carrying Jesus? He was put on a donkey. Now imagine if the donkey was saying, see people are singing first of all people are putting leaves and stuff for for jesus to pass what were the leaves for the donkey now this donkey and some of us here not mentioning names it is not me don't don't put let me walk here it is it is not me it is jesus you remove that glory that jesus is receiving they're not putting for you you happen to step on it because you're carrying jesus you happen to step on the leaves because you're carrying jesus they are singing praises. Were they singing to the donkey? Imagine the donkey is closing its ears. Don't sing to me. It's Jesus. It's ridiculous. They are not singing to the donkey. No one is singing for you. No one is singing. No one is putting leaves for you to walk on. They are singing for Jesus. And I love that example. Remember that. Remember the donkey. Anytime you want to... 
as you walk in this glory, and that's why you keep releasing fire on you and teaching you the word, so that you walk in this glory, then you bring glory to the Father. They see the Father. You definitely cannot raise anyone from the dead, you alone, as you are. You can't. But with this, if you walk in that glory, people will testify. People testified yesterday in that service when people were healed, when the crutches were thrown. In fact, they, I was told this morning that the lady left the crutches, so they should come. I was telling Pastor, we should start a wall of nini, everything that we've collected, glasses, because the other day we collected glasses for sh- short-sightedness, long-sightedness. We collect all of them to show people that Jesus heals. A museum, healing museum yeah. in our church. So that, do you think that people thought that Pastor Benjamin has healed them? No one thought like that. Imagine if he started saying, no, no. Of course, they, are, they know that it is God. Yeah. So let us walk. Stop being shy. Stop being, feeling small. Allow God to walk through you. It brings glory to him. Yeah, there's no glory that comes to him when we have nothing, when we are poor, when we are sickly. No one wants such a God. They are, okay. they are already like that in the world. They don't, you are not bringing anything different. You are not being salt. The last one was the unseen, number five. The unseen is visible. (laughs) In the kingdom of God, we see what the physical eyes cannot see. That is faith. (laughs) So in the world, we are told, even like I was giving an example, I love to buy things online. Even my dress, I bought it online. So we, we, you, you say that you can't pay until you see it, right? And that's wisdom. You don't just give money out there without seeing the product that you are buying. So you pay on delivery. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding. You pay on delivery. Here in the kingdom, our currency is faith. You pay before. You pay before delivery. In fact, that is the only assurance that you will, you will get the delivery. Yes. That is a mind of the world. That's foolishness. And that's what even the word says. That the word, like the, the things of the kingdom are foolishness. The gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. This is part of the gospel. In the kingdom, we think different. Jesus culture. We have to work on believing in God, trusting in him. And I talked about believing not only in him, but in his ability to do what we need done. I don't want to go into that. But yes, that you, I gave you the story of how someone can, an example, of how someone can tell you, I'll buy you a BMW and you will not believe them. So as much as they might have the willingness, they love you, but you know that their account cannot allow them to buy for you a BMW. But God, he tells you he will do this, and he is able. That's why we can trust him. Okay, so our faith is not based on nothing. Our faith is based on his character, a God who does not lie, and also his ability. Yes. We replace our faith in his character, his goodness, his stability, who he is. It changes not, no shadow of turning, all those things, but also in his ability that he is well able. Okay? Then now, finally, 20 years later, I get to today. Jesus culture, number six. Hating family is encouraged. Not my words. We are going to read scripture. And most of these things, it's Jesus who said. For some reason, I'm still, I've not gotten to that meditation of that part. But most of these things, it is Jesus who said himself. Maybe so that if it was Paul, people would have said Paul was, uh, he didn't get it right. But now Jesus, no one can correct him. Hating family, in case you've not understood. Hating, kuchukia, family is encouraged. Luke chapter 14 verse 26 NKJV. Let's start there. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, where well, I'm even wife, and I'm there, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Let's read NLT just for further explanation. If you want to be my disciple, you must. By comparison, hate everyone else, your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Let's continue with scripture before I explain. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. I'm telling you, Pastor likes to say this, but I think it's true. That Jesus, now we love him. 
because we have the full revelation until the end. But some of if even preachers who we've seen now who do close to some of these things or say some of these things Jesus used to say, we hate them. We think they're arrogant. But Jesus was worse. <laughs> he used to say a lot of things that were quite quote unquote harsh. Matthew chapter 7, chapter, th- chapter 10, sorry, verse 34 to 37, NKJV, yes. Do not think that I came, listen to this one. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son, my baby, or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Let me give you a few seconds for it to sink. Jesus, not Paul or Peter or Abraham, maybe some of you, if it was Old Testament, you would say, ah, that one is old. I told you guys, my, one of my purposes that I've understood very well is to kill religion and religious statements many Christians have that they do not understand. Many people cannot explain many parts of scripture. And that's why, like Muslims, they really despise Christians. Because them, they are taught. They can die for what they believe, even if it's wrong. Can you imagine, you have the truth, <laughs> and you can't explain it to anyone. Don't worry. God brought me here for you. Yes. So, like NLT explained, hate here means love less. Like the love you have for God, where you have placed him, is so intensely higher that even what you have for the rest looks like hate. That your passion for God, the seriousness you take your relationship with God, is so much that in comparison to everything else we can call it hate. Do you understand? Do you know opposites? We learned opposites in primary school where love and hate, they are on this side. So that love is so far higher than this love for others that it is in the category of hate. I'm trying to build a picture. Another thing I hear, even people who are not necessarily serious with God say, is mungumbele. When they are giving Oscar, thank you for the Oscars. God first. They probably got it from here. Today we should understand it. What does putting God first mean? Is it that you pray first thing in the morning? Putting God first means that you are intentional about our intimacy with him. That anything that brings that intimacy, compromises that intimacy, brings it down in any way, interferes with it, you kill it. Get rid of it. I gave you an example that I loved when I saw, when I heard stories about how my husband and his family were raised. That the dad would look for a school not because they perform well only, you know, that's how we, we think in Kenya. Well, that's how me, personally, that's how I was taken to Pangani Girls High School. Because it used to perform well. But the, this dad to pastor, no wonder he's like the way he is now, would look at the CU. How is the CU? How, is, how, is the, how, is the, how will his relationship be, with God be nurtured in that place? Do you know, I've had people who even, like the people are serious with God. Not everyone is joking. I have had people who refuse a job because it is taking me away from my church. And right now, I don't feel like I'm able to stand on my, by myself. <laughs> a relationship, you're like, apart from the word, <laughs> saying that we should not be yoked together with unbelievers. Also, you're like, my relationship, with even they, are, they might be a believer, thank you, Holy Spirit. They might be a believer, but they are... Um, This is one that has not yet come, but they are affecting your intimacy with God negatively. Affecting, I heard, is negative, yeah. But they are affecting your relationship with God. That you can't pray anymore because of this person. That you put that on hold. You're like, my intimacy. And notice I didn't say relationship. Because we can have a relationship that's not good. We have a bad relationship. Intimacy with God. 
that you love him to a fault that is your priority that anything that is not building this relationship that is taking me far from you i refuse it i better stay hungry i better stay single i better stay with this bad job and the reward so it didn't mean hating family now you go hating don't go talk to your people and i talked about this before when i was preaching about the church that sometimes you did you see that part where it said your enemies will be part of your own household where your family we are not on the same page when it comes to my intimacy with god that they do not understand that they make fun of my god that they do not allow me in that house i can't pray i can't i can't do anything that i want to do for god then it is okay to have family the household of faith yeah i have been now my family is coming back but i have been i've experienced that myself where my family this you guys are closer to me than my family my blood because they do not believe they believe they think i'm crazy <laughs> believing for supernatural child but they talked about me they said now these people we knew it they are losing it we knew it we told you we told you guys now this is pentecost pentecostalism extremism and it happened and they were quiet yesterday we saw we talked to you you were still pregnant now you've given birth the day is not told he um, i just keep quiet you don't want to love your enemies you don't have to tell them i told you did i tell you you of little faith no 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 you keep quiet but some of you maybe that's the that's why you are here today you didn't go to kisumu maybe that's an understanding you need to understand that you cannot love anything anyone more than you love god and how it's not just a saying i'm saying that if they or it affects your relationship your intimacy with god then it needs to go it must by the words of jesus I have a testimony about that. I was told that first of all, my brother, the one who comes here, he will watch it, he knows, he knows so it's okay. He went to Kisumu. He paid his own 12,000. <laughs> to go to Kisumu. <laughs> <laughs> And then more so this morning, he was the one preaching, preaching. You know in the morning this morning they all were sent to different churches to release the fire and also welcome people for the afternoon. So he went to Kisumu Polytechnic my brother who paid his 12,000. Hey. May it be for for you that the same if for the people who are believing God for their siblings for your parents. I know the feeling. God was not unjust. He does not not know that it hurts. But yeah, he still that's the cross to bear. Yeah, you still don't compromise for them. Yeah, you still choose your priorities are right. God and my intimacy with him, that is what is of priority to me. And just to say also to add that it's not for God. God does not just want many fans, followers. Now he has millions of followers. Now he's happy. Have you ever thought about it? Like that's not what God. It's for you. This prioritizing God and that's another thing we said on Thursday. that we were created with the void like that's how god created us that we can only be whole and complete in god so he knows that when anything else is taking your attention and you away from him it is for you of course he loves you but that's not it's not selfish he wants you to be okay so your family cannot give you what he can give you Luke chapter 9 verse 60 another funny like those funny statements on this same line were well, let the dead bury their dead Do you remember? Like someone was healed and then they wanted to follow Jesus, then they said let me first go bury my father. Cuz it was father, it was not even an auntie or a grand someone. It was their father. And Jesus told them let the dead bury their dead. You follow me. Imagine that. <laughs> you see why some pastors never preach this? It sounds mean, but it, who are we better than Jesus? <laughs> are we better teachers, more loving than Jesus? Jesus died. for these people you are protecting let the dead bury their dead i saw someone i st- i love to study so some of the 
Bible scholars say that he meant that the dead are those who are not born again. Like the ones who they, they, they don't have other priorities. So if you have to make a decision, let those ones bury the dead. Imagine, not that it's any better, but it's, yeah, it's an explanation I got. Let the dead bury their dead. Like that's what, so mean. But that's what it means. Like the people who still that is their priority. Yeah. And another way we've thought about it, I'm not saying you don't go for burials, but I'm giving you all these perspectives, is that when someone is dead, like they're already gone. Like so if it ever happens, you are in Sri Lanka preaching the gospel and someone here passes away, you can, in your heart, that's how you can deal with it. If you cannot come, that they, they already went. This is the time to be, to tell them about Jesus, to tell everyone around you, everyone you love about Jesus. So that even if you can't come bury their physical bodies, you can know that they're in heaven. Do you understand what I, I am explaining? Yeah. That maybe for some of you that will happen, that you're very far, stuck in snow somewhere, preaching the gospel or doing whatever God has called you to do, and you can't come back and bury. Tell them now about Jesus, everyone. So that when you can't come, you know that they're in heaven and you don't die of that feeling. Amen? Yes, you can't cancel a crusade. Steve, you can't cancel a crusade. Yes, millions of people have purpose to come. And then you tell them you're going to bury. The expectation, I give you an answer already, is for you to trust God that those people knew Jesus and they are going to heaven and that you, you do God's business. You save their thousand who are still alive. There are a million who are still alive who don't know Jesus. You'll remember me. One day. Selling all their wealth to follow Christ. Remember the rich young ruler? It's the same theme. That he, he, he came to Jesus and he said he's been following all the laws. Like many Christians, religious Christians can say. I, I do this, I do this, I'm okay. I think he asked about eternal life and that's what Jesus told him. Then Jesus told him, go and sell everything you own. And he, his face fell. That's what scripture says. It's part of this theme. Put, now you understand when you say put God first now from today you understand what it means. That's what Jesus, that's the theme. That's what God, Jesus was trying to communicate to human beings. That God has to be priority. Not for himself. He loves you, he wants you for himself. But for you, for your own good. Amen. Are we moving together? Yes. Anything supporting, if you forget everything I said in that point, you can remember this one. Anything supporting or growing that intimacy with God is encouraged. And on the contrary, anything affecting negatively that intimacy is cut off. Number seven, we were in number six. Number six was hating family is encouraged. <laughs> Number seven is growing, growth. Growth in the kingdom, Jesus culture, is by giving and not taking. Hey, I remember when I was younger and having issues like you like someone, you know those things for crushes. I remember one of my Sunday school, or I don't know if you guys had VBS, vocational Bible school, like it was for older people, like even when you're in high school, you have a VBS class and a VBS teacher. So I remember them telling me that if something is for you, you let it go. Then it will come back if it was meant for you. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, even you guys were told that one. It was a bit biblical. Makes sense. Like in the kingdom of God, we grow by releasing, not by taking. I'll give you an example. Let's start with finances. Um, we tithe. We are asked to be generous. All this is in scripture. You can go and listen to the, what was that series called? Generosity. Wealth and generosity. All the details are there. I don't want us to be derailed. But God celebrates giving. He even says, we're going to read that one. He wants a cheerful giver. He wants you to give not from compulsion or being forced or because it's a necessity, but to give because you had purpose in your heart to give. Tithing, and I, I remember this and wrote it down. Why should the Bible say in Hebrews that Jesus in heaven, we give tithe here, but in heaven he's the one who receives it. Why would that verse be put if we are not supposed to be giving tithe in the New Testament? 
did he misplace a verse? Should it be in Malachi chapter, well, now the last verse, so that we can, it means that Jesus is still receiving type. Don't listen to those, hey, let this be a revelation for you. Don't listen to people in the world. Hey, you're supposed to be the light and you're still debating whether to type or not. You need another hand laid or your lay in the afternoon. But how does that, that does not make sense to the world. I remember someone very close to me, I can't mention them, but they were telling me how they stopped tithing. They even used to tithe to Ratsi. And they told me they stopped tithing because they realized that that money, they can use it to pay electricity. You can laugh now, or maybe someone is even wondering why you're laughing because that's where they are and it's okay, we grow every day. But yeah, there are people who are like, my tithe is, maybe if you earn 100,000, it's 10K. You're like, this 10K, in the human thinking, that's why I'm saying, and this is how we'll end. We need to renew our minds because the kingdom way does not work like that. God says that this 90% will do more for you than that 100% without the tithe because it has the blessing of God. And you remember, I keep saying that everything God tells us to do is for our good. He wants us to trust him even in our money. Like, you know, if you give that 10K or whatever, you know, your tithe to you, wherever you are, is still a lot of money in your level. So you're giving that and trusting him because it's the, whatever you have is not even enough. So this giving is putting your trust on God that I'll get through the month with this. It is for our good, so that money does not hold us. You're not trying to sort yourself out. Let me tell you, this is one of the biggest problems that we believers have. Trying to sort ourselves out. I even posted about it this week for those people who follow me. That fear and worry are because of Christians, children of God, who have God, the maker of the universe, wanting to sort themselves out. Trying to figure out how this your salary is going to fit you. And your salary is little, can't support your life. So tithing is getting, reading yourself out of that problem. That you're like, God, you know, this is all the money I have and you give it. Do you know that I have seen this work so much that sometimes it even happens, like maybe you have this urgent need that has just come up and then money has just come, come in. Do you understand? Then this money is enough for this need. Do you understand? With, like without removing the tithe. Yeah, I can see you guys smiling. Kumba, we are many. So, and let me tell you, even no matter how much you have grown, you have to decide every day to obey God. Every day, because that day if you disobey, it will now become another struggle now. Something that you had already conquered. So this relationship with God, even like marriage and friendships, you decide every day. Every day you decide to be here. It's not to decide one day and that's enough, you decide every day. So it has happened to me, like money has come in and I needed to send this money for this other thing. And sometimes, okay, most of our expenditures are even things for church and God and all those things. But still, I have to take. So, and I'm saying I because I'm in charge of finances in our house. Praise the Lord. Yes, my husband brings all the money on the table and says, okay. Yeah, so I give time and I, I am re I'm remaining with less and I trust God. And sometimes, like they, they, can't, they, what, Zinapitana, I'm sorry, Pastor, today I've used a lot of Swahili. He does not like us to use Swahili. You will cut this out because we have international audiences. You get? Yeah, but they will cut it out. Like they pass each other on the way. I sent tithe and more, double of what I had comes in. Many times. Many times it's like God, God is, even to me, who is supposed to be a mature Christian, he still encourages me. He still reminds me, I got you. What, what is this? Now imagine if you had held on to that 10,000. Now see how much I've given you more. Like, we are all children to God. Like Apostle Selman, I'm still a child to God, a baby, still helping me. I'm encouraging someone. If you've been struggling, just, just trust God. And we are going to go, that's the last point we are going to do, about resting. Like in God, we need to rest. We need to behave as if we have a father. We need to have that revelation of God as our father. Not our earthly father. It doesn't even matter if you had an earthly father and he was good. God is better. That we can give. And you see, tithing is trusting God that he's going to provide for you, that he knows that you have all these needs and he has a way to provide for you. So you, you're just doing your small part of obeying him and trusting him. That was one example of how in the kingdom we grow by giving. 
another very good one is that in the kingdom of God we keep, we keep by releasing <laughs> like our lives you know that scripture we've not yet read any scripture um, let me see yes John chapter 12 verse 24 to 25 NLT and don't don't be confused it's the same uh, this all these points are under growth by giving not taking so another aspect of it I've said in the kingdom we keep by releasing John chapter 12 verse 24 to 25 please give me NLT our hand said it hey I'm telling you today my girl is working I, I tell you the truth unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies it remains alone but its death will produce many new kernels. I don't know if that's how it said, just forgive me. And plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Do you see God's way of thinking? That we keep by releasing. Whatever you trust in God's hands, you don't try to watch over it. I remember Joseph Prince was telling us that one of the things telling us, <laughs> ask the viewers, that uh, he'll come here. Someone had a dream that he came to Ratsi. He will. Yeah, that they were, it's Alex, that he was driving him from the airport coming here. I believe it. You just wait. You'll be hearing, if you're not still here. Um, now this mind of mine. Yes, one of the ways, one of the things that he really struggled to trust God with was his daughter. He has one daughter, beautiful one. I don't know if she, she's called Grace or someone. <laughs> That's funny because his speech is about Grace. It's possible that she's called Grace. And he says that he really struggled. Like he would wake up in the middle of the night thinking that she's sick or she's not breathing. Or you get like it, it tested his faith in God, his daughter. <laughs> and God taught him that this daughter, I'm even the one who gave you. <laughs> do you think that you love her more than I do? So why are you not resting? Do you think that you can even protect her from things that you don't even know? Because God sees all things. And I found that so powerful. And all of us have areas like that, our own areas like that in your life where you keep God. Some of us, I talked about this, which is a curse from Genesis, is uh, insecurity, both men and women, of the person you're in that relationship with. You want to check their phone numbers all the time, not phone numbers, texts and calls and WhatsApps, and you want to know where they are, not because you care, but because you're protecting your territory. <laughs> Sama wax, you and your wax now. Kazi, you're going to get tired. They can delete, they can use another number, they can meet outside. <laughs> like, hi. <laughs> now I'm just thinking of the work and getting tired already. You have to entrust whatever you value. I told you guys, when I start talking, the Holy Spirit just keeps giving me things. So I remember, like one scripture that has really, that God really gave me a revelation about was, uh, what does it say? That we give, we give our treasures, we keep our treasures in heaven, where moth and, do you remember that? Yeah, rust. <laughs> Rust, that's a funny thing to get in the Bible, rust. Yeah, but like the revelation God gave me at that point in my life, it's a long time ago, was everything I value, everything I value, I hold dear, I give it to him. In him, it can't rust. It, like it's safe. So even like I was telling you about my, my small brother, that's a scripture when I was praying for him when he was going through his own, I put him in God's hands. Warring is a sign that you've not put something in God's hand or someone that you are resting knowing that God is able to keep them, to take care of them, to bring them, to draw them to himself. Hey! I love the scripture. Yes, so um, that's how we work in the kingdom. We grow by giving. We keep by releasing. We live by dying. That was the next one. We live by dying. Dying to self, dying the old nature. Dying is said a lot in the word. And it's not a bad word like in the world. In the word dying is a good thing. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to the old man. I'm dead. I'm dead. We talked about being dead on Thursday. Dead to people's opinions and people's applause and people's criticism. Alive. I am alive to God. You see? Things that are not celebrated in the world, in the kingdom, they are precious. In the kingdom we live by dying. 
The last story I want to give us on this point is the rich fool. Luke chapter 12, <laughs> verse 13 to 21, NLT. I'll read it very fast, it's not long. It's very necessary for what we are doing. Then someone called from the crowd, teacher, please tell, but these people, they used to test Jesus. Hey, please tell my, tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Imagine in the crowd, Jesus, the son of God, teaching great mysteries. Then someone asks such a question. Let me repeat the question in case you're wondering. Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Yamani. Jesus replied, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware. Now he goes now to the parable we are reading about. Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm and produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do now after the harvest? And do you remember what I told you about God being a good God who gives rain even to this rich fool? He's the one who gave rain and the soil was able to produce very good crop. He said to himself, what should I do now that I have harvested all this? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods and I'll sit back and say to myself my friend you have enough stored away for years to come now take it easy eat drink and be merry but God said to him you fool you will die this very night then who will get everything you worked for <laughs> don't you just love the word of God hey, yes a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a, a rich relationship with God. I love that word there, rich. Uh, first of all, in comparison to the riches uh, that we've just talked about, and then to show what I was talking about earlier, about not just having a relationship, but a rich relationship with God. Have you ever thought about that parable? I'm sure you've heard of it sometime. This is still what I'm saying, that... He didn't involve God or other people in, his, in these riches. These riches were for him. Now to not work again, not to worry again because he has sorted himself out. Now he's sorted for years. He will even, instead of giving away the extra, he will build a bigger barn to put what was extra so that now he can sit and drink and make merry. No God, no other people. Self-reliance. Worldly thinking. The kingdom needs a lot of that man. People are here dying of hunger. You, you are just thinking about yours. I'm not saying you. I'm saying this rich fool. Thinking about himself. The world does not revolve around us. That's one of the biggest revelations I got. You know, I, I go through this a lot with people because of now how the church is growing. We are busy. I have no house girl. You don't reply to someone's message and they don't talk to you when they see you. Life does not revolve around you. You don't know if I didn't sleep the whole night. You don't know what's happening with that person that you're mad at. They, they, they didn't even do whatever they did thinking about you. You have not even crossed their mind for years. That post, you think that it's about you. It's not about you. We take offense a lot. Christians, we should be different. But see, Christians especially. Give grace to people. You know, Pastor even tell, used to say, I don't know if he says it anymore, but he used to say sometimes you can be so, like your mind is not on yourself so much that even when someone is actually saying something about you, you still don't get it. <laughs> like it passes you. Because you always think that they're, they're, they're thinking about, like they're talking about someone else. They're doing something else. You understand? I love that attitude. Where I can become so free like that until even when it's about me still, just passes over my head. Life does not revolve around us. Yeah? <laughs> that your, the scripture that says that you're ignorant of evil. I know there's a better version that you guys are more familiar with, but like ignorant of evil. 
that you only know good, that you don't know even things, bad things. I remember someone like Lucy keeps telling me that I don't even know what's happening with church people. Like she, she does not know stories of people. And I told her that's a good thing. You get, like she, like stories just pass her. That's a good thing. Be passed by bad stories. Never know bad things that are happening to people in their lives because you are too busy knowing the good things. I was, I was being told about a, a famous pastor. I won't tell you so that you go and know bad things. But in an international pastor we all love and follow, um, that he, he was discontinued from serving in his church. His own church that he started because of some bad things that he did. You get like some moral failure. And I was being told by my husband, I was like, oh, it's good that I don't even know. Like, I, I, let me be ignorant of bad things. They don't help me. You, if you are the one who always knows everyone's stories, everything bad that's happening in the country and even in your life and other people, you're removing, save space for good things. But for me, that is one thing that I feel that this rich fool had a problem with. He was thinking about himself. All these riches that we keep saying that you are going to get, remember they're not just for yourself. Of course they're for yourself. You'll buy that nice car, that nice house. You will live well, but it is for the kingdom, for souls. And it is useless. I'll repeat the last place, the last thing that Jesus said. A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. He didn't know God, according to that. He was going to die and go to hell that night. Then who will eat up the, <laughs> who will eat up, what did the scripture say? Let me find it so that I'm accurate. Who will get everything you worked for? Let's have a, a higher reason for this wealth and this abundance that we want. And let's have an intimate relationship with God. Amen? I'm on to our last point about Jesus' culture. Number eight and last. Constant rest is expected of every believer. <laughs> Constant rest. In the world, we are discouraged. We are told if you sleep more than six hours, you're a fool. That all the people who have been successful, I'm surprised that some people very at the front here are not writing notes. <laughs> it's very distracting to me. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Lord. Hey. I'm sorry. Constant rest. Yes, in the world, we are told not to sleep. Those of us who love to nap, if you can't announce that you are napping during the day because you are looked at like you are lazy or you, you are sleeping too much. And it's true. Like too much sleeping, we have a lot of work to do, even for the kingdom. But in the kingdom of God, rest in your heart. Rest, not having everything figured out. And trusting God with your life, your whole of it, every issue, every circumstance, everything that you don't know about and that you know about, resting in him, resting in his salvation, the way he provided for us to get born again, that that is enough. Resting in that his word is true, is celebrated in the kingdom. Rest. Another book, uh, forgotten what it's called, um, for Joseph Prince, he talks about rest. And he says one thing that God told him, I've even had it with uh, Oyedepo, Bishop Oyedepo, he says that God told him, when you rest, I work. When you work, me I rest. Hey, imagine God resting over your issues. <laughs> Write that one down for yourself. Remember it. That when you rest, God works. And you, when you start working, you take over the issues, God rests. He takes his hands off. He's like, okay, let's see. <laughs> Tell me when you're done. <laughs> hey, you can even finish the psalm when there. I'm telling you. The Sabbath rest. Do you know, for those of us, and please, you can catch up, you can, be, you can even start from where we are to read the, the Bible throughout the year. Don't be judged. God is not judgmental. He wants you to catch up wherever you are. So if you've not been reading the word with us, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, we've been reading through the whole Bible together as a church. Such a cool, awesome idea. So we are using the U version app. You can be helped by any of the ushers um, to join. But part of the places, yeah, so you read uh, uh, some, portion, some chapters every day. Yeah, and they, so we are covering, by the time the year ends, we'll have covered the whole Bible. So cool for those of us who have never, who had not yet done that. Yeah, so um, we read about the Sabbath, for those who remember. 
uko Exodus Leviticus Leviticus I think that's why it was mentioned do you know that God used to say that people should be killed if they work on the sabbath I'm telling you this is something that has really it's that's it's a season I mean now that God thinks very differently from human beings from the world imagine a god who forces us to rest I, I, when i was preparing and praying god reminded me for those of us who have children and or those who all of us who were children once you were forced to nap you remember and you hated it you can't wait for it to end so that you you go and play or you're like i'm not sleepy what's this about but imagine it's like that that's like a, a small picture of what god does with us you know that nap is good for this baby you know that this baby needs to rest so that in the evening or in late afternoon when like um she's very tired or he's very tired he's not going to be happy he's going to be cranky and disturbing everyone and not even it's for their own good you're doing this for their own good so you force them to take a nap at a certain time until they are old enough like when they are going to school now but even in school some schools they force them to nap still like it is for the development the good development of a child now imagine picture that if that helps you to understand now this we have a god a father who forces us to nap and this nap is all the time he wants us to rest of course i'm going to explain to us what this rest is but it is the sabbath rest i have another sermon a full teaching about the sabbath rest you can go look for it on youtube benjamin kasancha but i'll give you a short nini hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 verse 1 to 11 um but i'll explain it because we're not going to read all of it we'll read verse 11 after my explanation nlt so you remember the children of israel god brought them went and called moses not even moses we can even go even earlier he had promised um joseph i think that the people his people uh the people from his loins would be uh, slaves in a foreign land and after 400 years he would redeem them do you remember to the prophecy you can go look i, I didn't um research on all that uh, I, didn't, i didn't get the scriptures i researched i didn't get the scripture for all that But so God had a plan the same way and it's a, it's a shadow of us when the devil lied to Adam and he fell and all this disaster came upon us um he had a plan the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world that's how God is nothing catches him by the surprise some that one, that one is for someone also here nothing catches God by surprise even right now whatever is happening in your life trust him we're going to get there so he calls Moses Moses even had to leave his wife and his child to go and rescue deliver the people of Israel. And where was he taking them? We've learned about that that God does not take you out of Egypt to nowhere. Now you become a street child. He takes you to somewhere. This is the salvation life. This is what we are talking about. He saves you from hell and puts you to life. Yes. So he was taking them to where? Canaan are we together he took the children of Israel from um Egypt and he was taking them to Canaan okay so this during the desert was just in transition they were going somewhere that was the end game and he had prepared land for them there a good land flowing with milk and honey his option is still the best for us so they get there close by at the border and even this idea for spies was from still these people It was not from God. God does not need spies. God does not need us to see what is. We need to trust him. But still, even as loving as he is, he still explains to us what is in Canaan, which is our new life in salvation. We know that is good things for us. So they they sent 12 spies. Do you remember? Sent twelve spies and only two of them believed God. Joshua and Caleb. After everything they had seen, I told you when you remember the story of Aaron it made us nearly not continue the sermon on Thursday they even build a calf and say that this is our god this is the one who brought us from Egypt this calf a cow made of gold maybe if it was even alive maybe would have said maybe that they have removed their earrings and everything and made that let's let's forgive them so they go 12 of them and the 10 they focus on the giants they focus on in fact it was just the giants that the giants there we can't defeat them we are very small we are all that they looked at themselves we're going to come back to that looking at ourselves we even talked about it earlier looking at ourselves our strengths what we can do without god 
always it's smaller of course but Caleb and Joshua try to remind them but we have God we have God we are not going to fight alone he's the one who's even brought us do you think he didn't know about the giants and God was angry if you don't know the story go and read it's a very interesting story and how it's used in the New Testament even more applicable so he said these people everyone who's under a certain over a certain age here will not see the promised land because of why they didn't trust God because they focused on the giants were those giants bigger than God the God who had done everything for them do you know that even those scriptures that say how their their shoes were not torn their clothes were not tattered in a desert for all that time provided for them food from heaven some of us we've not seen food from heaven imagine so god said they are not going to enter rest so when we are going to read in a few minutes here about rest it's canon that they he, they were not able to enter that rest because they refused they did not trust god but he says that us now we have a chance to enter into that rest and that day is today. I love that scripture. I've never forgotten that that day is today. You can decide today. There is no process. As long as you have Jesus in your life, you can enter that rest. Another thing that that tells me is that you can be walking with Jesus and not trusting. It's not equivalent. You can be walking with Jesus. Many of us have walked with Jesus for years, but we learned how to rest maybe recently or we are still learning or we learn every day like I've told you. We are children in that regard that every day we need to decide to rest. I'll give you a very quick example um like about um I help uh, with the finances for the ministry don't worry I'm not able to I can't access the money but I I help with the planning and all that and one day God told me you need to rest about money because I'm a saver I am very organized I want to have everything I want to know this money is for this this money is for this Pastor don't give me another assignment if there's no money for that but that's not how faith works. So I realized that I'm carrying I'm starting to carry this ministry burdens on myself. Hey, so God told me you can't I was telling Steve the other day. Uh, you can't carry God's work. Friends, you can't carry God's plan for your life by yourself. It's too big. You will crash under the weight of God's plan for your life. He's spoken to you about releasing an album. Hey, and you think there you're there depressed. Imagine even the plan of God that should be a blessing to you brings depression to you why because you're trying to carry it by yourself I'm going to be this you're trying to now figure it do calculations like me how this is going to work maybe this is going to happen you start working single people you start making maybe it's this one so now I will do like this I'll, do, I'll be I'll go I'll move houses so that I move to their hot spot so that I see them every every Monday I'm I'll join worship team because that girl sings in worship team and i know they have practice on wednesdays and on saturday or sunday then i'll be able to see them hey positioning yourself i know we are laughing i know you we are we are laughing but this applies to many of us where we try in our own ways maybe it's not that dramatic the dramatic uh, nature is for us to understand the dramatic stories are for us to understand but working working hard we are christians yes we have believed god that salvation is by grace and all that but now the rest of the life now god give me this one working it out you're not sleeping at night we call it insomnia but yours is self inflicted insomnia <laughs> because you're busy trying to figure out god's plan for your life you cannot carry it by yourself so i'm telling you the story so ministry is expensive so if i'm there i'm just a steward like god has put me there to help plan our finances but not to provide for the ministry i was starting to get stressed so god told me leave it alone do you want me to let go to rest so that you work i was like no you work and that's how like like just in the few in the last few days just money just started coming in and i was like what i'm even holding cuz money comes from you people so in my worrying i'm holding god from working even in your lives to be able to give do you understand hey uh, that one is a personal nene kiboko yeah so resting in the kingdom is encouraged and we were saying about the israelites so that's why god imagine if you've ever wondered why they didn't or they were told they would wander in the desert for 40 years and never see the the land of canaan the promised land was because of that that they refused they refused to trust god they looked at the mountains and the big things the obstacles and removed their eyes from the king who had brought them from egypt who is able 
Amen. So we'll read that scripture that uh, my well-able friend has put up, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, LLT. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. Hey, some of you know the other version which says, let's labor. Labor to rest. Do you know that's the only time we are allowed to labor? And the other one is the only time we are allowed to fight a good fight of faith. Labor. We talk about not laboring here all the time. Even today I've talked about it a lot, not laboring. But this time, God gives us permission. The only time to labor <laughs> is to labor, not to labor. I'll read it again. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. God is not threatening us. He's just telling us the truth. If, le- if resting is not present, then falling is a must. So you see, I was about to fall, we trying to figure out that finances, God's work, that will cost millions and millions. You think 10,000 uh, people that God has spoken about being in Ratsi, I'm the one who's going to cater for them. I can't. If now we are 200 and the, I'm trying to carry it and it's heavy, imagine 10,000 and thousands and missions all over the world. That is just my application. I hope you are thinking about your application. That in the kingdom, God wants us to rest. Not resting, and I've been telling you, resting is not just in the air, resting. We rest because we have Jesus. Because we have God who has us covered. Who knows what we need. Who knows that he has called us to great things and he is not expecting us to do it by ourselves. Who is not short? His hand is not short. You know, <laughs> I love the Bible because of some of those funny statements. That his hand is not short. Has you ever read in Isaiah? His hand is not short to bless. Maybe us, we've been worshipping a short-handed God. A God with a short memory. Is your God with a short memory? A forgetful God. A God who sleeps. He says he never sleeps. That's why you can sleep at night restfully. He never sleeps, no slumbers. I told you this word is useless if you can't apply it in your life. Do you read that God never sleeps, no slumbers, and you think, oh, that's a nice, wow, what a rhyme. Amma, you, you apply that. So how does that, that means that I can sleep. My God, that my things are taken care of. That he can't blink one minute and something passes. So we are resting not only in our salvation. I've told you maybe that one you've captured. That we are born, we are born again by grace through faith that he did all the work he does not need us to work for salvation we work because we are children of God we work from because we are loved not to be loved that one maybe we we've said it enough but let's also rest in our daily lives rest in your calling that God has called you it's okay if you can't see if you prayed for sick if you've never prayed for anyone and they spoke in tongues yet God says he's called you for nations you're like if I can't even pray for someone to speak in tongues you just keep doing your part Keep coming and listening to the word. Keep praying and spending time with God. Keep making the decisions that we've talked about, prioritizing God and your intimacy with him. That's enough. Keep obeying step by step. He told you you'll get married, you'll have children, you're thinking how you're nearly 40. Keep trusting God. He said you'll, he does not lie. He's not a man. Hey, me, I'm glad that God is not a man. That he should lie or forget, or sleep, all those things that I'm saying. Let's learn to rest. Rest in the kingdom is celebrated. It is required, in fact. Cast all your cares upon him. Songs that we used to sing in Sunday school. This is the promise of the believer, the inheritance of the believer. Rest. Rest is the inheritance of the believer. That because you have God, you can rest. The world is not resting, let me tell you. Why? Because they're sorting themselves out. Their effort is what will equal to their... You get, like, they know that what I do is what... But us, we have extra. We can rest. I'm not saying we be lazy. I want to clarify that. Don't be lazy. Don't sleep at 11 and say, Pastor told us to rest. Don't be late for work. Pastors told us that many times and say that you are resting. Yeah? Sleep at midnight if it needs to be done. And that's, you know, I have a perfect example. I was telling you we were working on accounts yesterday. So Agnes was sending me the accounts at 2 a.m. 
And at six, they were up to go to the church they were preaching. I keep telling people, I hope they don't take it like a joke. Many of you have told you, supernatural energy. An inheritance of the saints. That you know, you don't worry because I have to be up in the morning. I'm now here working for you late. You're even doing it, murmuring. No blessing. What about you look at it like he knows? God, you knew that I have to do this. You know that I was not lazy. I was in the, like now, let's say, give Agnes as an example. She was in the services yesterday. She's running around doing many things. God knew. So hasn't he availed energy? Supernatural energy? So that you are even more rested than someone who slept for eight hours because you have God and you can do what needs to be done instead of giving excuses and stories. Let me tell you these things I tell you, I apply them in my life. I juggle so many things and I've told you like I don't have a house girl. But I never give excuses. I do what needs to be done. Why? Because I rely on the energy that God gives. Be strong in his might. In his power and something like that. Give me uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. That we be strong in God's might. In his, we don't have to do things alone. We can rely on his wisdom, on his strength, on his might. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Have you ever thought about that verse and how it applies to you? Renewal of the mind to think kingdom is a must. I think I have explained my case very well. We have seen how the world thinks very differently, functions very differently, and how us as believers need to renew our minds. If you've ever wondered what that renew our minds, because, because I said sometimes Christians, we have these big words that people don't understand. It is changing your mind to start thinking like God thinks, so that you're able to function in full capacity as a child of the kingdom, so that you're able to enjoy your inheritance as a saint. Yes, I called you a saint, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. As long as you're born again, you're a saint. So if, if you've been ignoring that, any scriptures that talk about saints, because you didn't know you are a saint. Let's renew our minds. Let's do it intentionally. Let's pray for our minds. Let's fill them with the word of God. Let me tell you a, a funny, another, I have many stories. Another funny story I had this week. Someone was saying that a man of God in Nigeria does not need, read newspapers. Yet, his work requires for newspapers to be read. So what he does, he pays. Not the company. Paying. The man pays someone to read. Which I don't know if it's good. Maybe that someone is not born again. We, we will need it. They're dead to bury their dead. Maybe someone who's not born again. Because we don't want someone who's born again. Because the same bad stories are going to someone else. Who we are. are you getting? Anyway. <laughs> so he pays someone to read the news for him. And only take what is relevant. Send him what is relevant. Do you see how people are serious with God? And then we wonder why they are walking in the glory that they are walking in. I know us in our house, we don't watch news. And yet we, we get to know what's happening from some of you and from social media and from our families that you write on the group. Some you open, some you don't open. Why don't we do that? Because as we are trying, like during COVID, we are trying to believe God that this thing should go away. We are trying to believe God. We are seeing how people are not being, many people around us were not, were not sick or we, when they got sick, it was never bad and they got healed. Someone else wants to tell us how it's bad, how it's increasing, how things are really bad, how we need help, how it bothers you, it affects your faith. And you still expect to get the results that you want. I'm trying to talk to us about renewing our minds. We need to stop watching some things. We need to get rid of some company. Them, they're always talking about these kind of things that you're trying to avoid. If you need to stop going to some fellowships, some watching some pastors who are telling you that your cast, generational castes are the problem you have, and pastor here is trying to teach you different, you wonder why it's not working. Make decisions. If you've decided you want the generational cast path, then us, we are the nini that are derailing you. Go that way. Remove us from your listening. listening. Listen to those ones of the curse so that you are fully in one. I'm trying to say, let's make a decision of what we want and let's be serious about it. Meditate on it day and night. Well, did you, do you think that that was just a nice, I keep saying, a nice rhyme for that scripture? Day and night he meant it, that throughout the day you're thinking about scripture. 
you're thinking about what we learned today this this morning during this sermon how does that apply to my life asking god which area do you want me which area is affecting our intimacy lord where are we in our intimacy you gauge with god he tells you this is and this is what i want you to start waking up at five instead of six hey god five okay you start yeah so that we are renewing our minds then we'll start to think like god and start to walk in this glory and be the salt thank you lord i remembered something else like this this is what this you see this kingdom this jesus culture this is the salt of the earth that's what makes you salt that's what makes you different if you lose it then you are not being of good to the world this this maybe you're wondering okay now a pastor is teaching very nicely but why the reason is that this is what makes you salt this is what makes you affect bring flavor and preserve the world bring them to Christ change the systems of the world it is this kingdom culture jesus culture that is why like in the kingdom things are different he is the light of the world meaning it's against darkness you get he is like he comes like fire meaning there is cold do you understand like god and his kingdom is different from the world because that's what the world needs he brings hope in despair meaning there's a lot of despair how do you bring hope by jesus culture carrying jesus culture living it out that's how your salt that's how your hope beauty for ashes we've read those scriptures he gives beauty for ashes beauty comes from this it is the salt it is this difference from the world so we are trying day and night to be like the world to fit in to not uh, shake the tables but that's ex- not that's very different from what god wants exactly opposite of what god has called us to he's called us to shake the tables because not just for the sake of it but to bring light and salt and fire and hope and beauty and healing so jesus culture is important I pray that from today from whatever we were in this journey of Jesus culture we'll pick it up more seriously. Yes, listen to the sermons again and again, pray in tongues. If you don't pray in tongues, you should tell us we pray for you you start praying in tongues. Praying in tongues helps you even in the renewal of your mind. You edify yourself. In Revelation or Phil- Philemon says about how speaking in tongues is to edify. Do you know what edifying means? To build. You're building. Who are you building? Are you becoming like is it like building muscles? Yes, in the in the spirit. That's how that's exercise, exercise, spiritual exercise. Part of it is speaking in tongues. You edify yourself. Then we represent God accurately. We become like our father who gives light and rain to even the evil doers. Amen. I want us to take communion. And in line with what we are we've learned today before I ask you guys to stand is to remember what Jesus died for that there is a higher life Nigerian preachers like to say come up hither it's not just a religious thing come up to where see yourself as God sees you see life as it should be see yourself as God sees you see the possibilities what is possible Have hope. Know your identity so that you can be this salt and light. Know your identity so that you can enjoy peace and joy in this world where there are many troubles. Yeah? Understand what salvation was about. So as we remember Jesus, let's remember that he died for this Jesus culture. He died for us to live this higher life. To not be pressed down. We walk in heaven, we sit in heavenly places. What does that mean? Is it just another nice saying to you? You have power and authority the glory that the father gave Jesus you have as a believer. Yeah? So that's what we are remembering. We say that Jesus said that we do this in remembrance of him. I told you that we do this in remembrance of also what he did, what he represents in your life. I'm born again is not just a nice thing to go to heaven. It's to be in communion with the father and to represent him accurately in this world that needs hope and joy and peace and light and fire and truth that's another good contrast lies and truth 
grace in a world that's condemning and full of work so i encourage us to stand up and as we take communion we remember that his body and his blood was for this too in if in case someone is new we don't believe that only believers or like if you didn't do anything wrong yesterday that those are the only people who should take the the blood and the body yes the blood and the body will even help you strengthen you to do better relying reminding you that we are relying on God's strength and what he did on the cross for us amen so take if you didn't take because of that let me give you a second if you felt that you're not worthy you're not serious you remember in our in our religious churches we used to be told we used to take it so seriously so sadly like you have to be solemn in a solemn mood you don't have to be you can be smiling remembering what Jesus did for you yes so if you're here and you had not taken because of that please please raise your hand and we'll give you even if you're not born again we're going to pray for you to get born again in a few minutes you can take communion everyone had taken okay let's start with the body if anyone is sick here as you take this it will work on that sickness that sickness is cast in the name of Jesus amen let's take the body together the blood of Jesus everything that it was shed for let that apply to your life today in the name of Jesus amen we can take it together just uh, take a few seconds to think about that you can close your eyes if you are unwell you can check whatever was wrong a headache a backache there's some lady you've been having a backache if it's not gone you can come and lay hands on you but it's not normal to have a backache even when you're on your period you should not have a backache Amen. yes so i pray healing over that in the name of jesus command it to live in the name of jesus you can check yourself headaches funny uh headaches yeah there's someone you've been having headaches because of your sight either when you watch um or you on the screen working for long you get a headache it should stop from today in the name of Jesus where yeah. someone had something on their scalp I don't know if it's a man or a woman but it's, it's you're itching a lot not a normal way you are even thinking about it this week like is it a sickness what is that we speak healing over it right now in the name of Jesus something else i'm passionate about that i'll pray over is feeling tired all the time wanting to sleep sleeping in the matatu in the morning when you're going to work instead of reading the bible because you're always tired i speak renewal right now in the name of jesus yes that lethargy is of the devil it's not of god yes you're vitalized in your mortal body always energetic to do what god has called you to do Amen. There's someone the final person. There's something that's happening at work that you need resolved. Like it's so serious that you it started like a small thing, but now it's become so serious that you're not sure you're going to keep your job. There are threats of losing your job. I speak that resolved in the name of Jesus. Yes, the Holy Spirit goes ahead of you speaking to the necessary people. You should come and testify when it happens. It was not your fault. Yes. It is corrected in the name of Jesus. Yes, and anything else you can take a, a minute to tell God what you're believing God, your father, what you're believing for. We agree together then we'll end the service. Tell the father what you want to see in your life, what you're believing God for. A situation that has taken forever to change. Maybe what you needed today is to learn to rest. Maybe you've been trying to work so much. Father, I speak breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you for your word. Thank you for how you love us, everyone under the sound of my voice, how you died for them, how you love them to infinity. How there's nothing that we can do that can make you love us more or less. I pray that your love will be so real to everyone. in the name of Jesus but we have a revelation of your love for us those basics that people ignore that's what we want so that will be established in your love for us to know the breadth and the height and the width 
and the depth of your love for us. Yes, so that we can share it with other people. We love people because we are loved. We comfort people because we are comforted. We love you, Lord. We bless you. And we are excited to be called after your name. Teach us to rest. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.